Welcome to Practical PID Tuning Part 1. I'm going to show you how I tune the PIDs on a copter starting from the scratch default Betaflight 261. I haven't touched a thing. I just installed it and configured it. And you're going to watch me take it from the very first Maiden all the way through the final tune. And I am not going to use any black box for this. I'm not going to cheat with black box. I'm going to show you it entirely by feel and by looking through the FPV camera. So with that being said, let's get into the initial steps. The initial steps are a little slow and that's because when you start flying a copter the first time you take it a little easy and you figure out if it's going to fall out of the sky, light on fire and kill your puppy. But then in the second half of this video I get into more of the nitty gritty PID tuning. I hope it's worth it for you. Enjoy. So the first thing I'm going to do is just a line of sight hover. Um, I like to stand well back from the copter the first time I do this. If I've got a motor going the wrong direction or just anything is wrong, the copter can go in an unexpected direction unexpectedly fast. So I stand way back and let's give her a go. Also, you know, if there's any issues with the receiver dropout or anything like that, We'll find out when we're not under the goggles. Okay, that's looking good. So nothing unexpected happened. Just fine there. And let's uh, put the goggles down and we'll give her another go. For the initial flight, I'm not going to do anything too extreme. Some people may find this approach a little bit too timid, but again, I... If there's anything wrong, I want to find out when I'm two feet off the ground going five miles an hour, not 100 feet off the ground going 70 miles an hour. So I'm just going to do some slow passes, get a feel for how the copter handles, and etc. Chopper, come here. Hey, come here. Good boy. So here I'm just going to fly slowly. I'm going to feel out the sticks. If anything's different about the rate or the up tilt or just every copter flies a little bit differently and I'm just feeling it out and getting a sense of how it flies. Now I'm flying a little more aggressively as I get confident with the copter. At this point the deficiencies in the tune may start to become more clear. Okay, everything's feeling pretty good. Okay, so what I'm doing now, is just gonna do some throttle punches and see what happens when I punch the throttle. I'm listening for oscillations and I'm watching for the nose to move up and down. So there was a yaw to the right when I punched the throttle. May need more yaw eye gain, perhaps. No prop wash whatsoever so far. Yeah, when I punch the throttle there coming down on that drop, you can see the pit, it moves in the pitch axis. Let me go up and drop again. See the nose comes up there? The nose comes up there. So that's uh, pitch eye gain needs to come up. Also, you notice that at the top of that last climb, when it crested the, the top, the nose came up. Watch again. I'm gonna... It didn't happen that time. So we've got a little bit of wobble on the pitch axis that we'll need to deal with. Now, how I like to check eye gain on the roll axis. Do you see how when I brought the throttle on there, it moved on the roll axis? I'm gonna do it a slow sort of descending turn and it dropped the pitch axis on that one just a little when I dropped the throttle you see right there as I bring the throttle up it's moving on the roll axis for sure so pitch and roll eye gain need to come up yeah really really sort of 
slop, sloppy when I drop the throttle. Almost no prop wash oscillation at all. There was a little bit of prop wash there. I kind of don't want to go too hard with the dog in the field. Yeah, it's, it's really solid. Um, so I'm going to raise P because I'm not getting any signs of oscillation. So I'm going to raise P until I start to see oscillation. I definitely needs to come up and that's not unexpected. I usually have to raise I. Um, Wow, that was a heck of a good set down. Yeah, I'm going to raise I because I can see that I need more, a lot of drift on all three axes, really. And that's what we're going to do. All right, so after the first flight, the successful maiden, let's take a look at what we got here. I actually, I'm not, I, I have a range where my I term usually is, but that's on an H style frame or uh, an X style frame like the QAVR. This is a different frame, so I'm not going to try to carry my preconceived notions forward as to what they should be. But I definitely saw that I needs to be higher on pitch roll and yaw. So let's choose to take that up by 10 points on all three axes. Okay? And I'm not going to touch yaw, I gain, or P gain, but I am also going to raise pitch and roll P gain and I like to find the oscillation point and work down. So let's just give them a good bump up. And that's it. We'll leave that. And we'll go back and we'll fly it again. And we'll see what happens. Oh yeah, it feels... The rates feel like I expect them to now. I can just hear oscillation now when I punch the throttle. Sounds like P-term oscillation. You can hear it. I hope you can hear it. And I can see some noise in the video that wasn't there, again, from the oscillations. I still don't think we're too high, though. How are we at uh, the, I, the I term? Pretty good, pretty solid there. Let's try a, a swoopy turn. So it's definitely, um, it's, it's twitching a little as the motors come on hard. That's, I think, normal though. Well, there's a little dip there. It dipped an arm, hang on. Yeah, roll eye gain might could come up. It looks pretty good. I'm going to do a sliding sideways move now. Pretty solid there. It held its attitude. It held its attitude pretty well. Hmm, it's pretty good. Let's try some uh, pylon turns. I'm starting to feel more confident with it. Oh, 
I definitely hear the P-term oscillation. The, uh, the up tilt's not quite where I expect it to be. And a little bit of prop wash oscillation there. And there, prop wash oscillation. So we're, we're getting into the realm of where P gain is where it needs to be. Let's try some flips and rolls. Hmm. It, the rates are different on pitch. That was way faster than I get with my with my 210, even though the rate is nominally the same. Someone on my YouTube channel was telling me about that, and I think they were right. The rate seems actually faster on roll, too. Wow. I don't see any bounce back or anything, though. Super smooth. Wow. Well, uh, that's all really good. See if we can get a little bit of speed now. So... That sounded like a D-term oscillation. Let's see if I can bring it out again. Yeah, that sounds like more like a D-term oscillation than P-term. Could be a little of both. Let's see how we're doing on yaw. Man, this thing just whew, handles really nice. I think we're gonna land it. I still don't know how to land it. Hey, we're back after the second flight. Let's go to PID tuning. I, and I feel like pitch and roll can both go up a little more. Now we were starting to get oscillations, so now I'm not going to bump them up quite as fast. I'm going to bump them up a little slower, still leaving y'all alone. Uh, I also felt like the eye gain could come up a little. I'm going to raise that as well on both axes. I don't feel like it's terribly important to have eye gain super precisely set, especially with Betaflight zeroing the eye term during flips and rolls. You can afford to have your eye gain a little high and it won't really too badly negatively affect you. The exception may be the yaw axis. I, high eye gain on yaw can, I've had it cause the copter to kind of pull into or out of turns in an undesirable way. But um, I feel like pitch and roll, you can afford to sort of raise them a little bit with a, you know, a little bit of a lackadaisical attitude. You don't have to worry about making them too high. So I'll go ahead and bump those up a little. I, pr I might even bump them to 50, but let's just leave it a, 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 at 45 for now. Mm. Um, I just know that I tend to like the eye gain to be a little more locked in and, and a little on the higher side versus the lower side. But I'll do, I'll do only five points for now. Um, I'm going to leave the D term alone. Once I get the P term a little bit more oscillate then I'm going to try raising the D gain to bring it back down and, and sharpen the copter up. The D term will make the copter respond slightly sharper, but also if, if everything is working properly, will uh, tame the P term oscillations. Uh, it, I, it, I feel like D-term is the thing that is the best for black box tuning because like you can really just see what it's doing, whereas it's a little harder to feel what it's doing when you're tuning visually. But since I'm doing a visual tune here, I'm not going to cheat and look at black box. I'm just going to feel it out with the D-term. Now, you'll notice I haven't touched yaw p-gain at all. Yaw p-gain, um, when yaw p-gain is too high, you get vibration characteristics, and I'm not seeing any of those yet, so I'm not concerned that I might have an issue there with it being too high. You'll seldom get oscillations on yaw because the yaw axis has not got as much authority as the pitch and roll axis. The yaw axis on a quadcopter relies on the motor's counter torque, 
um, rather than actually generating thrust. So the yaw axis has less authority and therefore you can have relatively high P gains without creating visible oscillations on the yaw axis. It will cause problems. It'll cause excess sort of vibration in the motor output that will destabilize the copter and make the copter act like it has too much noise really, too much vibration. Um, you can get D-term problems on all axes when yaw is too high. Uh, but for the time being, yaw feels fine. Um, and I'm, I might just leave it alone. Um, I tune yaw more by feel. If you want to understand what that's about, uh, take, take yaw down from whatever it is, cut it in half. So if your yaw is at nine, take it to 4.5 and go do some pylon style turns, very sharp 180 turns around a post fast. And you'll find that they'll get sloppy or try to try to hit air gates while turning. Don't just line up straight on the air gate, but do like a figure eight through through an air gate. And you'll find it's very hard to do with, with yaw. And then as you raise the yaw P gain, you'll, it'll, you'll sharpen up and the copter will feel like it's more doing what it's supposed to be doing. So that's where we're at right now. Uh, and I'm not, I don't have any more charged up batteries and I got other things to do today. So we're going to call this one and it'll be the end of this session. And when you next see flight videos, it'll be a different day. So that's why.